Hi, I'm Mario Vitale. Welcome to Italy, a culinary wonderland. Today I'm cooking for Debbie from Waldorf, Maryland. First ingredient, shallots. Next up, pancetta. Oh, that looks like poetry and pork. Thank you very much. Next up, oysters. I love Hama Hama from Washington. How about a dozen of those? Perfecto, thank you very much. And finally, white wine. One of my favorites from Friuli. Now let's get back to the kitchen. All right, we're back in the kitchen. This is for Debbie from Waldorf, Maryland, who chose shallots, pancetta, oysters, and white wine. So I'm gonna start by taking some of the pancetta and cutting it into little pieces. If you couldn't find pancetta, you could substitute bacon. And if you couldn't find shallots, you could substitute red onions. But why? You can find shallots and you can find pancetta. So I start with the pancetta and I get it in the pan and I wanna bring it till it's just below becoming crisp. I wanted to have rendered some of that fat out because I need the fat. Now this dish is kind of a take on Oysters Rockefeller, but we're gonna call it Oysters Ballotelli because I get confused so many times on Twitter for this guy Balotelli who plays soccer in Europe. So a lot of times people complain about my performance in a game every weekend, I have to call them back and let them know it's Batali, he's Balotelli. Anyway, so we have pancetta going here. We're gonna take some shallots. We just slice them straight across as opposed to finely dicing them or finely chopping them. Now my pancetta is just like I like it. I'm gonna leave the fat in the pan but there's only so much of it. So what I really want to do is mix it with a little bit of regular butter. So then I'm going to take my shallots and I'm going to take a clove of garlic and we're going to create this kind of almost like a spinach gratin thing that you could easily eat by itself. So I start by sweating shallots, garlic in here. What you want to do is get them nice and cooked. So we're going to add a little pinch of salt but we don't really want them to brown. I want them to kind of almost be soft and smooth like that. Now, while we're dealing with that, we're gonna take some oysters. Now often, people are frightened about oysters, so I'm gonna show you how to open them as soon as I get my spinach here in the pan. So now we're taking baby spinach or full spinach, any kind of spinach you want, a sprinkle of salt, and then I'm gonna move that through so that the shallots and the garlic are no longer on the very bottom of the pan, they're gonna be all over, mixed in throughout so that they don't ever get torched. Now an oyster is easy to open, provided you understand that it's not a stabbing motion, it's a prying motion. So you look in the oyster like so, and you see right in there, there's an obvious slot where this kind of a knife could go. Then what you do is you put your hand in like that, and while you're pressing, you're prying. And then you feel it just crack open like that, and you take it like so and along the top with the bottom of the knife, and then like that. Now these juices are crucial, so we're gonna save them if we have them. If we don't have them, everything's gonna be fine. So now our spinach is looking pretty darn tasty. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two things. A little sambuca. I'm really only looking for about two tablespoons. And the same with a little bit of white wine. So probably twice as much white wine as the Sambuca. And what that's gonna do is leave acidity and a little bit of sweetness. So now we have our oysters. I pre shucked some. So I'm gonna take some scallions and I'm gonna chop them up. The greens are gonna go in with my breadcrumbs and the whites are gonna go in with the spinach. The whites I'm actually gonna cut into slightly bigger pieces and throw them right in there. And we're gonna take the greens of the scallions into the pancetta we're gonna take about a half cup of panko breadcrumbs, my favorite kind. Louisiana style hot sauce. How hot do you like it, Debbie? Me too, hot. We're gonna probably add about a tablespoon and we're gonna take a little bit of the indisputed king of cheeses, Parmigiano Reggiano. And that is where we wanna be. And now what we do is we start to arrange our oysters on where we're gonna cook them. We get this rock salt, because it really just holds them in place. It adds no flavor, and in fact, doesn't really do much other than keep them in the right place and make the presentation look kinda groovy. Then we take each of the oysters and lay them on the rock salt. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a nice spoonful of this sauteed baby spinach, red lint with 
the sweetness and the acidity of the wine, the sambuca, the shallots, the garlic, and just a little seasoning for itself. And now just the breadcrumb topping. Maybe almost a whole teaspoon. And just piling it right on top like that. Kind of willy-nilly, it doesn't have to be exact because we're gonna put it under the broiler and what you want them to do is kind of get a little deep, dark, toasty because that will make the flavor of the oyster even that much more delicious. So now, broiler's on, you go into the oven. That should take maybe three minutes. Okay, so now these are perfectly cooked, slightly toasty on the outside, and all you do is you put them on a platter like this. Now eating these hot out of the oven or hot out of the broiler is delicious, but eating them at room temperature, provided you eat them within an hour of having cooked them, is actually a pretty delicious way. Serve them with just a little more hot sauce on each one. A lemon wedge for everyone to squeeze. Oysters Balotelli for Debbie from Waldorf who chose shallots, pancetta, oysters, and white wine.